please welcome Joanne Kneebone with her speech entitled Snip Snip. With her speech entitled Snip Snip. Please welcome Joanne Kneebone. Once upon a time, there was a man who found a cocoon of a butterfly. Watching, he saw a tiny hole appear. So he sat and kept a silent vigil for hours and hours as the butterfly struggled to push itself through that tiny hole. He saw an antenna, a foot, a face, but then it stopped. It appeared as if the butterfly was worn out from its silent struggle. So the man decided to help. He took a pair of scissors and snip, snip, cut away the rest of the cocoon. He was so excited waiting to see the butterfly fly free. But it didn't. It couldn't. It had a fat, swollen body and tiny, shriveled up little wings. You see, it's the struggle which is the essential part of the butterfly's transformation. Pushing itself through that tiny hole squeezes fluid from the body into the wings. Contest chair, ladies and gentlemen, this story reminds me of being a mum. When our kids are little caterpillars, it's our job to teach them, to guide them, to feed them. My son Charlie was full of energy and fun. A busy little caterpillar, he loved to run and run and run. He liked to play footy and lacrosse and swim at the beach with his mates. I used to say, Charlie, you make my heart smile. And of course, he loved his mum. And then he turned 13. He cocooned himself in his bedroom. He was dark and surly, moody and mean. He feasted on a diet of hot chips and burgers. A recluse. Now he only spoke to his mates remotely via Xbox. Apparently they were cocooning too. Everything between us became a World War III battle. He was determined to fight his own way out of his cocoon and I was equally determined to take him from a path that I knew would lead to failure. So what did I do? Snip, snip. Of course, I banned all social media, made him eat carrot sticks. I refused to listen to all of his tantrums and tears. I'm not really a controlling mum. Well, okay, I do run my house like a five-star general, but I loved him and I didn't want to see him fail. Snip, snip. Over the next few months, our battles became epic. One night, after a particularly horrible fight, I knew I had to back off or risk losing my son forever. So we had a chat and together we decided that from now on, Charlie would be in charge of all of his own life choices. He could do whatever he wanted. But he had to go to school and he couldn't do drugs. They were my two bits. I told him I would love him unconditionally. No more snip snip. So what do you think happened? Nothing, nothing changed. While his brothers were off playing sport on a weekend, he was cocooned in his bedroom, eating nachos and playing Xbox. Hmm. Have you ever had to try and help someone and watch them struggle? It can be heartbreaking and so hard to trust that they can find their own answers. That year, I learned that there is a huge difference between loving and supporting someone 
and telling them what you think they should do was about a year later. Charlie poked his head through his cocoon out his bedroom window door. He said, uh, Mum, I think I might try out for the lacrosse state team. Do you think you can help me get uh, fit and healthy? Just hold that thought, Charlie. Look, if that's what you really want, absolutely. Charlie became a focused, self-driven health and fitness machine. In six months, he lost 35 kilos. Whereas one minute he couldn't wake up in the morning, the next he's running 10 kilometers before breakfast. He made the lacrosse state and national team. And probably most important to Charlie, he got himself a girlfriend. Charlie metamorphosed into the man that he wanted to be. And as with that butterfly, it was the struggle which was the essential part of his transformation. And he emerged stronger for it. I'm so proud of him. And he continues to inspire me every day. Now, the only one who needs the snip snip in my house is my husband. Contest chair. <laughs>